Welcome back to Village TV, the story behind small business and entrepreneurs. And today I have a very special guest. This man took one truck and a buddy and turned it into one of Australia's largest removeless companies. Let me introduce you, Richard, from uh, Two Men and a Truck. Yeah. Richard. <laughs> Thanks, Sean, for having same, me. Same. Man, it's yeah. great to have you. Yeah, and I've got to tell you, you right. have an amazing family business and done an awesome job. And we really want to share that experience with the people out there today and share your small business experience in terms of how you went from, as you well know, as an as a operation that started in your lounge to now a very sophisticated removeless business that does continuously gro continuously grows and matures. And Richard, let's start with, tell us a little bit how you got into this business. Well, I was definitely not trained to, and I thought when I came to Australia in 1973, I'd be a removalist. I just came here as a backpacker. And when you're a backpacker, of course, you work with your hands. Yes. And I was staying in a hostel in King's Cross and a truck used to come every morning and said, anybody wants work, mate? And uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, I want to work, jumped on the truck. And, and in those days, you couldn't find much work. There wasn't any work in offices, so everything was sort of labour-intensive work. So I started uh, doing removals part-time, and 35 years, 40 years later, I'm still a removalist, a backpacker, <laughs> as I say. But I'm legal now. You're legal now. I'm legal now. <laughs> so I never intended to stay in Australia. It just sort of kind of happened. And, and you, you're a family business, um, and I guess you now are in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth. That's right. Um, how has that growth been for you? How have you slowly built the business to where it is today? Uh, it's been a very hard slog, of course, as you can imagine. The hardest part was setting up in Sydney because I didn't really realize I was going to set up a business. It, I thought I had one truck and then the second truck came along and there's a long story. <laughs> and another friend of mine said, he, oh, he's got a truck, can, can, can he work for me part-time? So slowly sort of grew the business from uh, one truck, two trucks. and I started working from the lounge room at home and... Then my wife sort of evicted us because of all the noise and then we moved to the sunroom and then we evicted again by my wife. We moved to a caravan I bought and put it in the backyard. So you can imagine working in the summertime in a caravan. So it's oh, can you make it <laughs> hot? <laughs> we had a bucket of water. We put our feet in the bucket of water. So, <laughs> well, eventually the council got fed up with us and we had to move. And then we moved into Camaray, a little shop there. And what do you think differentiated in all that process of growing? What do you think, what were you really focused on delivering to customers so that they came back to Tim and a Truck? I think it's all the customer uh, relationship with the customer, okay. our service. Uh, we're friendly, relaxed. We, we know how to handle people. And that's my daughter now has the same uh, attitude as I have, that's in our family culture. Okay. So we're always looking after the customer. We all, you know, nothing is too much for us. We try to do our best. That's an amazing way to do do business for sure. And as you spoke, your daughter is now CEO of the business in a family-run business. Um, you were describing earlier that what seventy percent of Australian businesses are family businesses. Yes, I believe so. I went to um, a family business Australia conference yesterday, and seventy percent of business are family owned and family operated so that's about 50 percent of the economy wow but you also have to f take a fact when you start a business it already becomes a by default a family business because it affects the whole family <laughs> yes because you affect your wife you, you, maybe family members put money into it yeah uh, you're working hard so every business is really a family business yes it is certainly is and i want to talk about two things that you really need to find out about two minute truck which i think really make them such a unique and powerful company at the same time here in Australia. The two things I love a lot about your business, one is the ability to be innovative. And you think a removalist company, how innovative can you be? But we'll find out from Richard soon about how innovation has driven their company and delivered a better customer service. The second is their desire to be part of the community and their continuous drive to give back to the community. Um, so let's talk about innovation. Um, how has Two Minute Truck been innovative so that it can deliver better service to its customers? I think we're one of the most innovative com companies. A lot of other remove companies or come to us and say, how do you do things? <laughs> it's like our booking systems, our management system, CRM, our telephone operations, how we manage all the drivers and on the road. Yeah. Everything is controlled. Everything is managed well. We're all innovating. And that, that only... 
it makes it very interesting to run a business. If you do nothing, if it, you don't progress. So you have to innovate all the time to be relevant, I believe. Absolutely. And that innovation, do you think it de delivers a better customer experience at the end of the day? It certainly does. And it also makes you more efficient in how you operate. Okay. You can operate a business if you don't innovate. Uh, very, uh, it's very cost effective to innovate because yeah. things change. And it works much better. Let's talk about systems briefly, because I think a lot of small businesses out there, if you run a small business, one thing that allow you to drive your business forward and experience real growth or organic growth is systems and procedures. How important have those been in your business? Well, I, when I first started, Sean, I, I didn't have any systems in place. I had nothing in place. <laughs> I still remember, and laughing to my accountant, I used to go to a box, shoe box with all my receipts, and <laughs> this is it, you sort it out. I think a lot of people will know and what you're talking of, about. <laughs> and of course, that has all changed. Now, now everything is systems and procedures. If you don't have systems in place, nobody knows where to stand and how things operate. And then you don't get the respect from your employees because yeah. you don't know how it works. So systems are absolutely essential, and the procedures, how you do things, and your accountability to the systems. Wonderful. That's a great learning lesson for any small business out there. Every business has to have a good system. You have to have a good structure. You have to know what you're doing, set your goals, targets. Fantastic. And uh, let's talk then about something that I think really makes you such a, a wonderful company, not only to work in, but also uh, in the community, and that's your continuous devotion to giving back. Um, you seem to give forward, give back, and donate a lot of your time and energy and, and obviously money to community. Can you just tell us a little bit about what, what you do do? Well, I think it's totally essential for any business to uh, give back to the people that, that use your services. So in our business, we've got trucks, so people want us to move things, like for the Cancer Foundation, we move all the bicycles, Okay. So we have the trucks available for the council, we do work, we do the Anne Frank exhibition, we take that around Australia. And what it does, community service, it also makes the staff happy because okay. we're contributing and also the staff learn about other projects outside moving, like with the Anne Frank exhibition, a lot of my staff never knew much about the Anne Frank, okay. but now they're getting all involved with the Anne Frank which has now also become school bullying, cyberspace bullying. It all gets sort of involved with it. Great. So it's a great, great thing to do social responsibility programs yeah. for any business. You contribute so much to society. That's awesome. I think that's so, it's so important for kind And you don't have to necessarily give money, as you say. You give it your time, a bit of your resources, your knowledge. And I think that's... Yeah, the expertise. That's, expertise. that's absolutely essential. If I, we don't really give money to charities. We just provide services to them. That's amazing. I and think. you contribute a lot, lot more, I believe. Great. And um, Richard, you're a busy man. I mean, I know you've stepped down a lot from, from running the business, but you're an active man. And I think a, a lot of businesses out there can learn from your involvement in, in, in blogging, social media, YouTube channels. Tell us a bit more about how you share the, the Two Men in a Truck story. Well, people like to hear the story, and uh, people like to hear the story from uh, from somebody that came to Australia with only twenty dollars, and how they really set, set up a, a business. Yeah. And I think I came to Australia with a, a golden spoon in my mouth because I'm, I might not have had money, but I did see Holland just after the war and how it was, and my mother sort of queuing up for food stamps, and you get a lot of value there, and you, yeah. a lot of hard work is sort of. In you, yeah. so yeah, when yeah. you come to Australia, you determined to be successful, and you also haven't got this fear. I'm going to lose money because you came with no money. <laughs> you got nothing to lose. So you got nothing to lose, <laughs> and also you got a lot of values too. And uh, that's what I've learned from my from my parents and from Holland. The grass is so much better here than back home. Wow, such a great story. And let's sum up. I'd love to know your, your, your big tips for small businesses, business owners out there, or people who want to start their own business. What are your main tips for your growing your business? What do you think are the most fundamental things that have helped you succeed with your business? Uh, that's the, the B's, the B for Bravo. <laughs> and I'll tell you what it is. It's branding. Branding, yep. It's the company branding, your personal branding. You have to brand yourself too as the yep. owner of Two Men in a Truck. Everybody knows, so a lot of people know me. Yes. Uh, you have to brand your culture. 
of the business. Okay. People have to know the value values of your customers, okay. what you stand for, what the business stands for. So it's all really about branding and have a good name that people can you can brand. Right. And that's very important. All the branding have that right. People know you. There you go. And I think And you, it's a cheap advertising, it doesn't really cost anything. No, especially if you do the right things by mm. your customers and you put the right perception out there, you keep it simple. I love this story. If you hop on to uh to in a truck, there's a wonderful story from the CEO and, and your daughter, and that's um you made her every time she answered the phone to go two men in a truck hello, and no matter who was on the phone. Yeah. And it was just that constant message that keeping that message really Simple and, and, and firm and, and, and making sure people knew who you were. That's right. So branding to us is very important. But when you start a business, it's always, you know the word kiss, don't you? Keep yes. it simple, keep it stupid, keep it s- straight, keep it... That's how you, you, you don't spend money when you start a business. No. If you don't have to spend the money. Keep it all, keep your finances tight. Good. And there's so many people really, when you start a business, they think, oh, I'm going to make so much money. But of course, in reality, you don't. It takes a long time. So you don't buy fancy cars or fancy office. You just keep it basic. That's right. You get a caravan, put it on your lawn. Yeah, then we start for the caravan. <laughs> and now we've got a better office. But we always keep things very much into uh, into budget. There you go. And i got to tell you what, two men and a truck certainly know how to move your stuff on a budget and make sure you deliver you, deliver your 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 goodies as you wanted to the right location. So I, I encourage you, if you're a business owner, to connect here with Richard. He's uh, very connectable on social media, as you should be as a small business owner. Um, and have a chat with him. He's out there. He's uh, write a great blog about business and being in business and how they keep growing. So, Richard, thank you so much thank for you sharing. Thank you, It was I, absolutely fantastic. Being I really here. appreciate it. And I know business owners out there have so much to learn from someone like yourself and the processes you've developed to grow as a business owner. So, well done. It's, it's a lovely story, the one that I keep enjoying reading about. But, Sean, you said a very good word there, learning. And you always have to learn. Yes. You always have to do courses. And train yourself. There you go. And then you get ideas to innovate. I love it because Village TV is all about learning. And you can learn from people like Richard and the many other experts right here on Village TV. So make sure you subscribe to Village TV and learn from lots more guests and hosts that we have on the show. Richard, thank you so much for your time. Please connect with Richard. You'll see his links below. And that's another edition of Village TV right here. See you soon.